It's your boy Lizzo, man. Session podcast. I'm here, man, with the urban legend, man. Living myth, walking bucket. Man, say whatever you want, man, but this is my dog for sure, man. We got Kizo Brown in the building, in the flesh, for sure, man. How you feeling? Feeling great, man. Living great, doing great. Everything is great. Yes, sir, man. That's good to hear, man. Kizo, you know, go way back. I'm talking, you know, way back. I had to, I even went in my drawer, man, on some reminiscing. Had to pull the ring out, you know. Just because you don't have one, by the way, you know, you know, we did go to rival schools, me, Morgan Park, uh, him, Simeon, so I did have to throw that in your face a little bit, you know what I'm saying, you, you fell short a little bit, but, uh, you know, uh, just just the, the, the way I was able to see you come up through the ranks from the aerial days, you know, to Simeon, and then just even further, just watching you walk in the gyms and just unload a clip on people, you know what I mean, like, effortlessly to just and just walking off like it's nothing you know and, and going back home being Kizo and, and and you know just everything going on I really needed to bring you in man let's let's talk about it and, and let's let's just remember you know what I'm saying a lot of these these hoop memories that you were able to give you literally thousands of people you know what I'm saying you are you got moments embellished in in thousands of people's heads bro forever you know what I'm saying so right. I just wanted to uh, uh, come talk to you personally, given the fact that, you know, I, I've known you for so long and just I got the opportunity to, you know, and everybody wants to so bad. Um, I just wanted to, you know, talk to you a little bit about Kizo Brown. You know what I mean? Um, first and foremost, man, let's let's just talk about let's take it back, man. Let's let's take it back, man. Let's talk about those, those aerial days. Uh, you know what I'm saying? Take me back to how that duo between you and Chase Adams. Oh, that duo was, it was amazing. It was just, it was like a Shaq Kobe thing. Yeah. Me and him were always just work out together. Mm -hmm. and just putting our minds together and just go out there and just play the game. And we just can always come out and win. We were just special kids together. We both doing well right now. I wanted to shout out to him. Yeah. And we just, we just loved the game that much as far as working hard and, and wanting to make it to the NBA. Yeah. Yeah, no, yeah, like you and Chase Adams, on an eighth grade level, arguably could have probably beat some high school teams, varsity team. Yeah. Like I honestly, arguably, like I've seen teams on the varsity level bad enough that you guys could have probably on the eighth grade level, you know, really given it to. Because even on the AAU circuit, I mean, you guys would give older kids work all the time, like all the time. Right. And so, like, you know, those aerial days was something special. Was that something like um, you and Chase Adams like? you know, talked about going forward, like potentially going to high school when you guys were making the decision? We was talking about it, but I was already, already committed to going to Simeon. Yeah. Like I always used to watch Simeon when I was younger, for like at least like eight, nine years old, I was watching Simeon, Jabari Park, I was watching him. Yeah. So that was already committed to me going to Simeon, but he was, he was, he was a Tyler Eulis fan, so he wanted to go mm -hmm. over there with Tyler Eulis played at. Mm-hmm. Well, I mean, when you try to think about like demographics of like where to go to high school, everybody try to make it, you know, for their fit, their personal fit. I personally think, you know, y'all two doing high school together would have been just complete damage all over again because right. y'all was doing it on the circuit across the country. And, you know, y'all were doing it all over the city as eighth graders. So I don't see how it would have changed, uh, you know, but everybody's demographic when it comes to the high school thing and where to go to school, you know, and, and a lot of people tank their own talents choosing that wrong, you know what I mean? So that's why I was even curious to just ask you on a personal level, you know, like I know it came probably came down to the major top schools, Whitney Young, Simeon's, Morgan Parks, um, who else do you have you know, if I'm throwing out if I'm missing some names I apologize yes yeah you know you know all the top anybody that was a powerhouse in the city I'm pretty sure wants you but like what was it to you that was just like on a personal level that was just that made Simeon feel like it a winning program I love winning uh, the coach coach Rob he was a special coach to me I used to watch him like I said back in the uh, what made him so special like how he just work his kids, mm -hmm. how he put his kids on the, in the right situation to be successful and make it to the league, and just how they had hard he is on them. And I love I love the coaches that's hard on the players so they can just be successful and try to go to the NBA. But uh, Simeon, it was just a winning program. I just love winning, so I just decided to go there. Yeah. Now Simeon, I mean, 
unarguably the best, the most winningest program I feel like we have in our city. And they've proven that year over year. I mean, you can't argue that as a winner. And I mean, yeah, I feel you. If you if I was coming from Ariel too, winning all the time, I wouldn't want to go to a program as a freshman where, you know, your job might be a lot harder to keep winning. Even the, you know what I mean? So going to Simeon where it's like a proven winning program, you know you can still taste that glory, still, you know, and then contribute as well to that glory. So right. that's what made it, I probably, I, I would say, like, uh, just a done deal. So then, like, going into Simeon, though, bro, like, you was just so highly touted, right? Like, coming out of eighth grade. How did that feel for you, like, stepping into Simeon your first days? Like, I know you probably did the workouts and whatnot, but, like, your first official days, you know, on campus, what was that like for you? It was amazing seeing just just to see the just to see the whole school. It was just amazing. My first day coming in, mm -hmm. all I was thinking about was just man going to, going to the classroom and just sitting down and, and learning. Right. But at the end of the day, I was just thinking about winning the city and the state championship and doing my books as well. Mm -hmm. But it was amazing seeing the walls. My first day was amazing. Yeah. How would the, how was the like reception from the student body for you? You know what I'm saying, like being Kizo Brown. You know, by then you've already had mixtapes on Baller's Life, hundreds of thousands of views. What was the like perception of you to the student body? It was cool. I was I was used to the fame, so I wasn't really focused on like being down, mm -hmm. up and downs. Mm -hmm. I was used to the fame. There you go. Now nah, that makes sense. It's so different being able to come in to high school like already used to the fame. Like yeah, that's such a fame. rare. I was, I was used to the fame. <laughs> no, yeah, because I mean, you couldn't go to any gym across the country, and and they didn't know who you were. You know what I'm saying? And that was just a fact. And then you got like the invite to the Team USA uh, yeah, uh, camp. Yeah, USA camp. Yeah, how was that experience? Just like. Going from, you know, being like, you in the city, I feel like we got top country, you know, top tier talent across the country here in the city when we're playing in some of these tough gyms. But like, when you got to be in that environment, you know, out in Colorado, what was that like to see now players that could do some of the same things as you, maybe more than you, or just in a different style, but just as efficient than you um, on that level? How was that for you? It was humble. It was making me humble just okay. to see, see them guys. And how, how good they was and how, how they work after was. It was just making me humble myself and just get back to the, to the just simple, calm down, relax. Yeah. Pray, pray, pray that everything work out. It was just, it was a humble, it was a humble experience. Yeah. That, that I mean, yeah, that pool of talent. Yeah. It kind of would make you think about your situation a lot differently. I mean, you know, being from a kid from, you know, how we live and, just what we, you know, see and just hear every day, you know what I'm saying? Like, didn't that feel like just the biggest breath of fresh air, though? Yeah, Being able to get, like, loud. the gear, you know, you see in that life, it's almost like you get, like, a taste of the pro life, you know, like a, yeah. like a slight taste of that, you know? Did that, like, help push your dreams even further? It helped a lot. It helped me just decide on, on, on being a good person, how I treat myself and treat my family, and how I have backwards stuff goes like in the business wise mm -hmm. and, and it just helped a lot yeah and now you know Simeon the Simeon days uh in Kizo Brown's career we all know just it, it, you know it had the rockiness in between with you having to sit out and you know but you had some really extreme moments you know at Simeon that you know it was almost like I remember just being in those days where we was just kind of like well, what's what Kizo gonna do and then here came the, the uh, city playoffs. Uh -huh. And I think you cracked open for like 25. Yeah. And I'm sitting there looking at it on TV like like you couldn't miss. Like you took over a game. And I think you were a sophomore. A freshman? A sophomore? You were a freshman that year? I think I was a sophomore. Sophomore? Either one. And, but it was just like, man, this is a kid, bro. Like this is a kid. And you had the whole arena locked in. And you was just playing ball, man. And those are some of the best days, like. I was able to see visually because it was one of those things where, like, we saw uh, we saw you, uh, uh, Chase, Ben Coupe, um, all, everybody was on Baller's Life as eighth graders, and then to see you guys so young stepping in 
in Chicago, bro, to do this on Chicago State. Like, anybody knows, like, not everybody got a chance to play in Chicago State in the city playoffs. So, right. if you got a chance to play in Chicago State, you know how tough it is playing in that little that little mini arena with five or whatever thousand people uh, packed in. And you had that whole city locked in and on TV, bro. So, like, run me through that game just, like, your mindset, like, like, just run me through that game through Kizo's mind. That game was special. My memories came back to when I used to watch Jabari play that. Mm-hmm. So I just set my mind to just, to just go off. Yeah. And when I first made the first bucket, my mind just exploded. And I just went out for like 30. And you know what's crazy? That's the most perfect answer I expected for you. Because... You literally just like when when if anybody has been in the gym with you, they'll literally know like, you know, and everybody talks crap in the gym, everybody talking smack. And you really don't say much at all. Like right, you really literally talk. don't, don't really talk, talk at all. And it's like when you make the first one, you'll let somebody know like it's about to be a long day. Man. I've literally seen this, I promise I think we went to uh the Chicago Basketball Club runs a couple summers ago when they were, like, doing those summer runs. Yeah. And I don't think we just pulled up random or whatever, and it was just, like, a couple shots, you know, you were just getting up and down. like, and, and I don't think anybody in the gym just understood you were just trying to get loose. Right. And, like, yeah, so to. he's shooting, you know, and this is, you know, if, you know, Kizo, he's a scorer. So if he touches the ball, most of the time he's looking to score the ball. That's his job, you know. It is what it is. Um, certified, though, so... You know, you, you get like a maybe I think four or five shots and it's just off and you're lax though. Like you're just running back on defense and then there's someone's like, Hey, we need you to uh, play some ball or whatever and it's just like I mean literally like probably the next seven shots were just just that and you never even like took your head off the floor. Right. Like he never looked up to say anything to anybody. He never like pointed at anybody. He got his sweat. I think your team probably lost. Yeah, you know. sat down for like two seconds, and somebody was like, "Hey, we need you to run again," and you were like, "All right," <laughs> you know, like right, we lost out. You know what I'm saying? So like that's the different like type of level of basketball this guy has, and 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 I know people across the world, uh, Kizo fans, might think like, "Okay, yeah, pickup game," but you have never had a pickup game here in Chicago, and it is not a regular basketball not, game, right? At all, <laughs> at all. On any level, I mean, the worst player in the gym is going to give you his best effort, 100%. And it just makes it that much tougher, man. Going forward, though, I really want to just highlight uh, and ask you and talk to you about uh, the JBA. Remember the JBA? So uh, people who really don't know what the JBA is, LeVar Ball's dad, LeVar Ball, the dad of Lonzo, LaMelo, and Jello, started that basketball league. And uh, they went across the country, got a few teams together. And short stint, you know, but you, you popped on the scene for three games. And this is why we're talking to Kizo right now. You popped on the scene for three games. In those three games, you averaged, I think, what, 43 points? Yeah, 43. In three games? Uh-huh. Run me through <laughs> those three games because you just popped on, like, they picked you up, the household name. In three games straight, you gave him 43, you, I think it was like 43, 44, and 45 or something along those lines, something like that. Talk to me about how it felt to just be on that arena floor, being a televised team uniform, and what that meant to you to be able to showcase your skill again on that type of level. It was amazing. Being on that arena was, was great. It was that, right? It was really grateful for me, yeah. you know, where I come from. And what the things that I be have to do to be successful, mm-hmm. but them games was just matted off of, uh, the bad games. So I just went off. In my mind, I had um, about the games that I played bad in. Yeah. So I just wanted to put them games into this the game that I was playing in at the arena, and I scored about forty, like three games, three four games. And then China was calling. Yeah. And that's when I went out there to China. Yeah. So like, but. I just want you to understand a different level of thinking that you have, and I don't even think you recognize this, but the JBA, you didn't know, but you knew being in that arena on that floor with just the people who might be connected with the JBA was was prime time. 
You know, that it was prime time. And you unload it at the right time. And that right. goes back from sophomore year, uh, <laughs> popping off 25 in the prime time moment, to those aerial days where y'all won city because y'all never lost to anybody. You know what I'm saying? So that just transcends. And then you said China call. So talk to me a bit about that because I think it was like, the little wild ball, yeah, uh, wild ball thing. Talk to me about that. Like, how was that experience with just being able to dip and go across the world? I was like, let's go. Yeah. I was so happy that they called. And mm-hmm. I was grateful that they called China. Wild ball called. And I was like, well, let's get it done. Let's uh-huh. go out there and go and go and go make some baskets. Yeah. How was it for, for the fans out there? Like, you know, I know they super basketball fans. How were they towards you? Fans were static. They yeah. were all they was all over the place. Just yeah. they have having boards saying, Let's go, let's go, let's go. Mm-hmm. So I just fed off that and scored about forty something out there too. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So China didn't work out, but then you got home, you know what I'm saying? And, you know, all in all, man, it's just basketball for Kizo Brown, like what does basketball really like really mean to you at the end of the day, you know what I'm saying? It's just a big old heart. It's red. <laughs> and it's love. That's yeah. all basketball is for me. It's love. It's love. I love basketball. Yeah. That's, that's it for basketball. That's it, man. It's so crazy, man. Like, now just, like, when I look back on ball, man, you think about it. You, you really remember those hard practices, running. But then, like, when you look back at it, like, you wouldn't change none of that stuff for the world, like. Those are some of the best days of your life, dying on those lines, doing suicides, you know, whatever you had to do to get conditioned, you know, getting up thousands and thousands of shots, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. It's just, it's, it's really a different, different level of thinking. Now I just kind of want to, like, pick your brain a little bit because, I mean, you really, you really seen a lot of basketball, you know what I'm saying? Who would you say is, like, the toughest player to guard you? Toughest group ever, like the guard. toughest player you ever played against. Like you was trying to really go crazy, and you felt like, and like you gotta be honest too, man. You gotta be honest. Who you feel like really locked you up? I had to go with Marcus Levette. Yeah. When he when I played against Marcus Park. Yeah. That's who was guarding me, so I had to go with him. Yeah. I had to go with Marcus. He was quick though, man. Yeah, he was. He was very. Quick. Yeah, very quick. That kid is very quick. That's for sure. I mean, extremely quick. So he's really hard to guard. And he was every time he played y'all, I ain't gonna lie, being on the sideline, seeing he him play, him, he was he was yeah he was locked in. He was locked in. So then going forward, who would you say like in a game gave you the best head to head matchup? Like other than just guarding you, who did you feel like you scoring and going back and forth with gave you you know bucket for bucket? Um, I gotta go with Io. Io, really? Even mom, even mom is saying Io. That's crazy. <laughs> even Io. mom is saying Io. Io. Wow. Yeah, Io Shout out so Iso, good. man. Yeah, Io is. I remember Iso coming into the gym right before he transferred from Westinghouse. And this was nicknamed him Iso, right? Yeah, they nicknamed him. You nicknamed him Iso? That kid's got it. I mean, he was probably like fourteen, and I was a senior. And, you know, we were getting ready to go down state. Like, they were already put out of playoffs. And we were getting ready to go down state again. <clears throat> he came into the gym. And I swear to God, he was the hardest player I ever guarded. And I would always try to guard, you know, the best player or whatever. That was my right. thing. He was so hard to guard as, like, a 15-year-old. He was, like, six one already. He was really tall. He was skinny, though. But he was really hard to guard. He just had this, like, savvy about his game that was different. Dang, that's different. So then, who would you say, because uh, you had a lot of great teammates, and I don't want to step on no toes, but who would you say uh, was the best teammate you ever played with? DJ Williams. Really? Yeah, DJ Dennis. <coughs> really? DJ he played Williams. last season at DePaul, I, I think, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Red. And me and, uh, mm-hmm. yep, me and Kane Harris played for Heritage, and we played against them. And I just thought he was he was like six five in eighth grade. But he was so skilled. Like he wasn't just like tall and you know, like when you're like eighth grade, you're tall, you like six you know, they usually gotta teach you how to run. The kid was so skilled, he was like point guard. And he had another guy with him that was like also six two or six three, like really tall too. 
But DJ was really good. And the first time I saw an eighth grader just go up and dunk with two hands. Yeah, he was nice. Just regularly. That's a really interesting uh that's a really interesting one. Out of all the teammates, I honestly didn't think you would say DJ, but he was now just rem- rem- reminiscing on it. He was really good, and he never sped up his game for anybody. Like yeah, he played, he played really like you know, like really like Kyle Anderson, you know, the Memphis Grizzlies, like real slow mo ball, but he it was really efficient. Yeah. That's real interesting. So who do you think you you see? Like, say, talk to me about like the circuit, right? Who do you think you was the best player you've seen in any gym? Just like, you know, you've seen, you know those times you hear somebody slam and you in the gym and then everybody run over to that court because you're trying to see what's going on. Like, who was one of those best players that you were just able to just, like, sit back in the gym and actually watch in a different game that you were just, like, at, at that level and at that time? like Marvin like, Bagley. Yeah. yeah. It was Marvin Bagley. I was at the uh, East versus West camp. Okay. And I was the I was the man that, but then they said somebody else was coming here. So I'm like, who was that? He's uh-huh. like six, seven, uh-huh. in eighth grade. I'm like seven. Oh, this one, Marcus ba- Marvin Bagley was young. Yeah, that's when he was young. Wow. And he came over. He was dunking and stuff. I'm like, yeah, he he's solid. He nice. He gonna be an NBA player. Wow, that's crazy. We talking about the Marcus ba- Bagley of Sacramento Kings? That's crazy. And, and you were able to go up against him in eighth grade in the camp. Yeah, and he was East one of, versus West. He was the first player that really showed you, like, you knew he was a pro. Yeah, yeah, I knew he was a pro when I seen him. Wow, that kind of stayed with him though, going all the way through high school. Then the dude, like, it was kind of written that he How was much a you pro. Have against him, Pizzo? I had about thirty some, thirty. You had about thirty some, thirty five, thirty five in the camp. Yeah. But how much did Bagley have? He had about twenty six. I, I played better uh, than him. Yeah, you played better than him. Yeah. But you just knew, like he had it. Yeah, I knew okay. He had it. Okay. Nah, you definitely always held your own. Like especially like I remember that time coming out of eighth grade. They like Kizo Brown is the number one player in the world. Like yeah. it was there was no debate. I mean articles and magazines. I mean, everything, bro. There was literally no debate who the number one player coming out of eighth grade was. It was definitely Kizo Brown. And that's the thing, though, man. Like, what you really got to recognize, bro, is you shed so much light on Chicago basketball players to where it's like you being in eighth grade, I was able to eat going forward off basketball because of that. You know what I'm saying? Like, Ballers Life wasn't recording all of us. Right. They started recording Kizo Brown and Chase Adams first, for real. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? They were they also I mean, you know, they had Jabari. You know what I'm saying? They were recording Jabari. They had you know, they obviously started with Derrick Rose. But when y'all did it, that went like on a real worldwide scale to where everybody started getting coverage. Right. You saw Scott at our games, he was at y'all games, you even had little players could follow on y'all, Evan Gilliard, yeah. uh, Charlie Moores. You know, like they were really now highlighting Chicago guards, Marcus Levette. You got a player to come all the way from California, bro, because we got the top guards. You get me? Like, and so, like, I just, that's why I've always had to come here and just, like, talk about it because you really highlighted so much for us for basketball, bro, that really helped a lot of us eat. And, like, you talking, uh, Marcus Levette just did his thing overseas. Uh, he's mm-hmm. back home working out right now. I just left L.A. We just left L.A. with his dad working out in his gym. I came and messed with his players. And then uh, you just uh, mentioned ISO. We yeah, just yeah, just yeah, talking like he's probably going to come out. And it's looking lottery the way he's playing. I mean, it's going to be tough. He's six four, built now. like, And so it's crazy, bro. Like, you got to realize like your influence on a lot of this Chicago basketball, bro, is just in the hole. It's just like, you know, Kizo really got a stamp. Like, you... You know, you you know, it's crazy when we're young, we always hear about these stories of these great Chicago basketball players, bro. Like, everywhere from, I mean, you take it back in the day, you hear about the, the, the King days when they was winning the state championships, you know, yeah. like the Hoop Dream days, you know, you know all those players. Even to, like, the Isaiah Thomases, then you go up to, like, Benji's, you hear about the Derrick Rose, then Jabari Parkers, and it's like, we listen to all those stories, bro, and like you are really a, like a Chicago hoop legend, bro. Like, right. how do you feel just like after having this conversation, really recognizing that you will forever be a Chicago hoop legend? How does that feel knowing it? It's just a blessing. I always get the glory to God. 
get the glory to God. And whatever he got coming my way, I'm I'm down with it because he got the he got the good plan. He got the best plan for me. Yes, sir. Get the glory to God in his left hand, man. I'm here with the lucky lefty, man. It's Kizo Brown, it's your boy Lil Zo. Kizo, I appreciate you. Thanks. It's my dog, man, for sure. Appreciate you, man. We back in the gym tomorrow too, right? Yeah, tomorrow. tomorrow we in the gym. So we, yep, first day back tomorrow. So I'm definitely, you know, I'm pulling up. We gonna get that footage for sure. So we definitely locked in, man. Kizo Brown, man. Thank you. Yeah.